Hello all YouTubers, this is Rudy the Antenna Whisperer, K7RAW, coming to you with an exciting new project, and that is a really super small HF antenna for restricted areas. You know, I've been working on a restricted area antenna to help those people who are in HOAs, including myself, uh, or apartments, or even working POTA where they just can't manage to put up any kind of a reasonable HF antenna, vertical, dipole, long wire, whatever. And so I've been developing an antenna based on my experience with the slinky dipole from years ago. Now the slinky dipole is an interesting device. It is resonant. You can tune it to be resonant by stretching it or relaxing it and you can get the right frequency, get it to be the SWR you want, a low SWR, where you want it to be, by tapping it at the right number of coils for each leg of your dipole. But the problem is keeping the spacing on a slinky dipole, especially if you want to use it in a vertical mode. So I developed a way to do that by winding ordinary hookup wire to a pool noodle winding it around a one of the large size three inch diameter pool noodles that kind of looks like this okay and uh, building it around that now this antenna is about one fifth the size of a normal vertical dipole now you can operate it in vertical mode horizontal mode of course it's so small and in addition no radials no balance no tuners, no loading coils, no ground planes, nothing. Just this tuner. And for an average uh, vertical or horizontal 10 meter dipole, which would be about 17 feet long, I've replaced it with this guy right here. That, let me get it into the picture here. That's the entire antenna. It's uh, just over three feet long. So let me give you a, a quick tour. So as I said, I built it on pool noodle and it's fed in the middle. There's a coax that's running inside of PVC that ends up being the core of this. This is a PVC three quarter inch cap. And there's the uh, tubing that goes up inside of the pool noodle. And then I've got the fitting here and then down here and around is a coax and the coax comes up inside and comes to the middle inside and gets connected to the wires that I then wrap around the outside of the pool noodle. One inch spacing, 37 turns, 17 and a half turns on each leg. And I put a couple of uh, cable ties here just to keep it in good condition, uh, keep it all tied off nicely. So let me tell you, show you a little bit more of how I did this. What I did is I used a piece of coax that had a BNC connector pre-connected to it. That looks like that. And that's what I'm using right there. Fed that the loose end of the coax up inside, or actually I fed the wires down through the end of the tubing here, out the tube, so that I could solder it here at, at this end of the tube. I stripped it back as usual and soldered those, the two wires that were hookup wires to get wrapped around the outside of the noodle, and then pulled it back up inside until the coax was at the center point uh, close to a hole that I drilled inside of the PVC pipe and then led those out here and here to the outside of the pool noodle. This one started wrapping down this way. This one started wrapping up this way. So how does it work? It actually performs pretty well. It works as well as any vertical dipole on the transmit side. It's not quite as sensitive on the receive side because it is physically smaller and it catches less uh, of the electromagnetic waves on the receive side. But receive is usually not as big a problem as trying to get hurt. So 
how does one mount this? Well, you could mount that by uh, putting a stub right here. Let me show you. Uh, I will uh, try to show you. You can put a piece of three-quarter inch PVC into the bottom, like so. And then you can mount that to any kind of a mass with clamps, okay? Or, if you want to work really portable, then you can do what I do, and that is you can put a short piece of stub of PVC tubing onto a three-quarter inch to half inch adapter and in, into that adapter I put a one of these which is a half inch by three eighths inch threaded part it's an, uh, a little adapter and that goes into the the half inch part of the step down of this adapter that goes from three quarter to half inch and then I put one of these uh, half inch to three eighths inch threaded and then I thread this guy as you might be able to see I thread this guy with a tap for a painter pole which is a three quarter inch by five turn per inch thread very very coarse thread and I'll show you an example of that right here that's what they look like of course you're familiar with that that's a broomstick handle it's a painter pole it's a it's a pole for uh, nets for a, a pool uh, scoop, de uh, debris uh, leaf scoop, and this little adapter guy gets threads right on the top of there like so, and from there you can just simply put, well, I have one in here already, let me, let me try to remove this guy, there we go, and we just put it on like so, and you have a pool noodle antenna. Hook it up straight on with your coax and with BNC uh, coax on the end, and uh, at least five or six clamp-on mixed 43 type ferrites as a current choke, and you have yourself a ready-to-go antenna. No radials, no nothing. You can put that, mount that, uh, hold it up with anything. A couple of guy wires or an inexpensive tripod. So I'm going to put the uh, materials and the instructions in the description below. And uh, it should be pretty straightforward for you to build one of these. I put a three-quarter inch cap on the top to keep the rain out. And if you're going to leave it out in the sun... Uh, the pool noodle won't last that long. The UV kind of gets to it after a while. So there are places where you can buy uh, PVC heat shrink tubing, uh, both the slip-on tubing as well as a cap. And uh, you slip on the cap, then you slip the, uh, or actually slip the tubing on, slip the cap over the tubing, heat shrink it all with a heat gun, and now you have a completely sealed weatherproof design, including a very nice design of the bottom here, to keep your connector uh, pretty much out of the weather and out of the rain. So, there you have it. Um, pretty exciting. And, of course, this is scalable. Since it's a simple dipole, uh, one-fifth the size of a normal dipole, you can build other size dipoles. For example, this one behind me is a 20-meter dipole. And uh, that's it. This is the whole 20 meter dipole. This is all you need. You can mount this vertically, you mount it horizontally. If you put a PVC T in the center point here at the feed point, where I've got a BNC connector right now. Let me show you that. I've got a BNC connector. If you put a T on the two pieces of the PVC core inside, then you can actually mount this horizontally as a horizontal dipole in a classic sense. So let me get this in, in camera here. That is the entire 20 meter dipole. And this probably weighs pound and a half, maybe two pounds at the most. And it, it's actually fairly stiff. So it'll hold, hang in the breeze pretty well. You can, uh, you can move it around and it's fairly portable too, as you can see. So, 
Uh, I can grab it with two fingers. And so that's a full 20 meter dipole. We can do 16, uh, 15 meter dipoles. You can do any dipole you want. The, uh, so the general rule is about for the 10 meter, roughly 40 turns, and then you can trim it on both sides evenly until you get it in tune into resonance. For 20 meters, guess what? It's 80 turns. For 15 meters, guess what? 60 turns. And you can trim that down a, a half a turn, trim it down an inch at a time if you need to, and voila, you've got a monovander. Now, what's really cool is you, there's no reason why you can't hook these up in parallel with uh, coax. You get a couple coax splitters from your feed line, and you split that up to two of these guys. And with PVC, you can build all kinds of structures for both vertical and horizontal noodles um, as antennas, one for 10 meters, one for 20, one for 15. You can even do it in all three dimensions if you wanted to, if you had the right kind of connectors. And now you can go uh, get creative with your PVC from your local hardware store. So all of this is available, pool noodles from your local pool supply store, of course the PVC from your hardware store, a little bit of coax with a connector on the internet, and some hookup wire and a couple cable ties, and that's it. Less than 25 bucks. So it's pretty tough to get uh, something that'll do this in such a small space and be efficient. It's totally resonant. And I've been getting very good signal reports operating DX all over the world with this antenna up at about 20 feet. Haven't tried it out in the field yet on the ground, but there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't work like a good quality dipole on a uh, vertical dipole on the ground. So if you like this video, please click on the, uh, the like button and click on the bell notification and please subscribe to the channel and watch this channel because I've got a whole bunch of exciting uh, new videos I'm queuing up on antennas, on antenna design, analysis, nano VNAs, tuners, LC circuits, Smith charts, uh, we get into SimSmith, we talk about uh, all about propagation, we talk about all kinds of very interesting things. So again, this is Rudy the Antenna Whisperer, wishing you uh, have a great day and uh, give me some feedback. I'd like to hear what you think about the pool noodle and if you build one, let me know for sure. I'd love to hear what you've done with it and any ideas you have to improve it. So till next time, uh, this is Rudy the Antenna Whisperer, wishing you a great time with ham radio. Bye-bye.